Hey guys, what's going on? It's Crazy Dog here. Um, I'm trying to tackle a problem that a lot of people have with the PS4, um, both new and existing users, and that's hard drive space. Um, 500 gigabytes from the factory nowadays just isn't enough, especially with the size of today's games. What I've done is I've actually taken the time to migrate from the 500 to a two terabyte drive, and I figured I'd take you guys on the journey in case you're interested and wanted to know how much hassle it would be. Um, so it's a long video. I do hope it's very informative. I do hope you stick to the end. Um, so stay tuned. It's going to roll right now. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Queasy Dog here, and I thought I'd do a little bit of a different video today other than just gameplay. Um, this is going to be highlighting one of the major concerns that a lot of people have with their stock or factory fresh PS4, and that's the storage that you actually get with it. So as you can see here, this is my current hard drive. Um, not a lot on there other than games. Capture Gallery I've really trimmed down ever since I got my capture card. Honestly, not really much of a point having it captured on the console anymore. Save games, again, pretty minimal. But looking here, we can see the major brunt of it is with the applications. And if we delve a little bit deeper here, um, you can see there's a lot of indie games. Indie games really don't take up a lot of room. But look at this, Battlefield Hardline, 46 gigs as we go down. Dying Light, 20, which is not much, but there we go. Grand Theft Auto, 54. Um, yeah, 54 again for NBA, 41 for The Evil Within, 25 for Far Cry. Um, so I went to my local mall the other day and I put a pre-order down for The Witcher and I thought, you know what, The Witcher's coming out, we've also got House of Wolves for Destiny. I don't want to have to sacrifice any more of this content than I already have. There are dozens of games that I've already uninstalled, um, especially the PlayStation Plus games. And the downfall is there's a lot of really good content there that I haven't got to yet. And honestly, I probably never will, because if it's not on my hard drive, I'm not going to think about going back and uh, re-downloading it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to swap out the stock 500 today with a 2 terabyte drive. Um, I was going to do it by myself, and I thought, you know what, why not, uh, why not enlighten the people and show everybody how it's done? So without further ado, we're going to cut through to an unboxing of the Seagate hard drive I chose, why I chose it, and we'll see you guys in just a, just a minute. All right, guys, welcome back. So this is the hard drive here that I chose to put into the PS4. This is the Seagate Slim Plus Portable. Um, the actual model number is the STDR2000. And if anybody's done any research into grabbing an external drive or an internal drive for their PlayStation, the STDR2000 uh, STDR has probably popped up quite a few times. Um, this is one that they've probably had the best luck with. Technically, you can go with any 2.5 format that's at least a, a minimum thickness or maximum thickness, thickness of 9 millimeters. Um, so this one was the one that I picked, and I figured I'd do a little bit of an unboxing for everybody here as well. So let's jump right into it. Um, the reason why as well, guys, that I went with external and a lot of other people go with external is the straight internal drive itself is going to run you about 130 in Canada. Uh, US, I honestly haven't looked at the pricing myself. Um, but obviously the major downfall is once you take out your hard drive from the PS4, you've really got nothing to do with it. Going with an external, this one here ran me 119. I've seen them on sale for as low as 89 at times in Canada. Um, going with an external means that you actually have an exterior casing that you can then put your old internal in from the PS4 and you're going to have a 500 gig external drive. So it's a little bit of a bonus. So here is the drive itself. Honestly, pretty straightforward. Get this out of the package here. Nice red color, which is nice. Fingerprint magnet, as you can see already. So yeah, not, not a whole lot on the go. Again, if we take a look, uh, two terabyte. This one actually has a different model on it, SRD00F1. But it is the STDR2000 that we're using. Um, other than that, we've just got, you know, USB cable, pretty straightforward. We're gonna be saving this for use as an external. Um, as a side note as well, one other thing you guys will need when it comes to a hard drive swap, and this will help us transition into 
the next portion of the video is something like this. Um, so this is a 3.5 um, external drive. Um, very, very old. It's an old lacy drive that I had kicking around back in the day before all the media streamers. This was when you actually had access to put movies on. It has its own little interface or it had its own little interface. I've formatted it since and I'll let you play videos. But what this is for um, in this application, holy reflection, look at my microphone, um, is actually to go ahead and put our save files on. So we could cloud storage them, but um, just as an added safety precaution, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to back them all up on this drive. So again, I'm gonna cut over to backing up the old drive and uh, I'll see you guys in just a, just a few seconds here. All right, guys, welcome back. So what I've done here is I had to do a little bit of off-camera management. Um, the previous hard drive I showed you unfortunately did not work. Um, if you're going to go the route of a hard drive, uh, NTFS will not function. I had to reformat another older drive that I'm not using for a PC backup to um, EXFAT. That was able to be recognized. Now, the only other downfall is the other hard drive that I'm using is only a 250 gig, which gives you about 232 usable. So I did have to go in and I did have to remove some games that I can simply reinstall back again from a disc. So it's not, not the end of the world. Um, it's games that I'm not actively playing right now or will remember to install right away. They're not my go-to games. Um, as a side note as well, not to uh, deviate too much from this, but as you can see here, I am screen capping right now, and I also have the enabled DHDCP uh, checked. If you guys wanna know how I'm doing that to make sure that I can still watch Blu-rays, watch Netflix, do everything while still recording, hit me up in the comments below. Um, if there's enough need or want, I will certainly do a video on that. It's pretty cool, um, and it's it saved my butt big time because not only do I game and record on my PS4, um, it's also sort of the um, the hub, if you will, for my, my basement entertainment system. So um, we're going to go back into Backup and Reset, Backup PS4. And so this states, uh, trophies will not be backed up. It is recommended that the following users sync trophies with PlayStation Network by selecting trophies from the home screen. We'll certainly do that right after this. Save data for the following user cannot be restored to any other PS4. Um, this just means that this is a sub-user. Um, they don't have their own account and there's no email attached. So it can only go on this console. This is our babysitter. He really doesn't use it that much anyway, but I'll still put it back once we're done. Um, so it's gonna be a moment allocating space, um, trying to determine what we have to back up, and then also how much room is on the, uh, the medium we're putting it all on to. All right, perfect. So that's all done. As you can see, captures, I really don't use them. There's just a, a hair on there. I took some really awesome screenshots that I was pretty proud of in The Last of Us, so I did want to keep those on there. Um, save data, so four gigs of actually, you know, actual game saves. Um, settings, and then applications. Now, this is something new, guys. Applications were never able to be backed up on disk before. It was simply game saves. Now, the downfall with that is if by chance in the past, you had a game that maybe you traded or you lent or you just rented at the time and you were backing up a save for it, you couldn't put that save file back onto your console unless that game was still installed. So without being able to back up the application that may have already been on your drive, there was no way for you to put that save file back on. So it means that, uh, or meant, sorry, that your backup drive kind of had to stay forever your backup drive, just in case, again, you buy that game in the future, what have you. Um, not a problem now, we do have applications. As you can see here, if you uncheck this item, the installed applications of the PS4 will not be restored. You must download them or insert the disc again. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna back this up. The description's absolutely fine. We've got today's date on there as well. And, okay, that's just preparing the backup. I was gonna say that's awful quick for the actual backup. Um, my speeds may take a little bit of a dip as well. I believe the front USBs are USB 3s for the PS4, but I've actually run a 16 foot USB extension from my my media center in the living room uh, across to my desktop. And uh, 
and then I've got a powered seven port hub that I actually have the hard drive into. So it's powered, which is good. 16 foot extension's got a repeater on it, which is good as well. Um, but it is USB 2.0, so we may take a little bit of hit in the transfer. Um, but we're gonna leave it at this. It looks like the PC, or sorry, the, uh, the PS4 already rebooted, so there's no more screen cap here. Um, oh, there we go, we're back. Um, so this is just showing you that it is backing up the PS4. This is gonna be a while, so I'm gonna let it do its thing. Um, after that, we'll actually rip apart the PS4, put the drive in, show you guys how to put the software back onto your, your console, and then hopefully before time runs out today, we'll be able to put everything from the drive back on. Um, it's actually showing me there's nine hours left in the backup, so maybe today's not gonna be the day, but you know, we'll play it by ear and we'll see what happens. So again, Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll we'll see you in just a little bit here. All right, guys, so as you can see here, this is the backup complete screen. Uh, it took us about um, a full day to get here, and the only reason why is the backup itself was going to take about six to eight hours. So I figured, you know what, I'll let it run. I've got to go to work. I'll deal with it when I get home. Get home, saw all of my clocks in my house flickering. Realized my computer was off, you know, the PlayStation wasn't on standby anymore. I had had a, a power interruption or a full power outage. Um, so that set me back because when I came home last night, uh, I had to start the process all over again. So when I woke up this morning, thankfully, this is the screen that was presented to me, the backup complete screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it the next step further, um, see what happens after this, get the trophies all synced, and uh, take it from there. Alright guys, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go about taking this guy apart. Now, I am watching myself do this through the camera I'm recording in, so it's going to be kind of hard. I don't know if I'm going to be able to record the whole thing, but we're definitely going to give it a try. So the two things you're going to need would be just two little screwdrivers, flathead, and so on. So let's take a look here. There is just a fine little crease. And let's see if we can get this here, guys. Oh, God. Maybe I can't do this on camera. I don't know. We might have to jump cut this. All right. We'll be back in just a minute with this actually taken apart. All right, guys, so I think we made some progress here. As you can see, it is starting to open up. Um, don't be scared of it, if I can give you guys one piece of advice. Um, the reason why it's a little bit difficult, and I'll show you why, there's a bead of glue on the inside of it that kind of keeps it from coming all the way apart. There we go. So you can hear the glue coming apart. Yeah, and there it is there. So we've got the drive. Drive is a Samsung drive inside. There we go. Now the drive itself does just come out as well. You're gonna see there's the connector. This is where you might need to take one of these guys. And again, looking through the camera for this is extremely extremely difficult but we'll make do all right perfect so just be careful as well guys because you do have that connector you don't want to rip it all the way out and rip that connector out so there's your case leave that for later um, another tip guys as well um, if by chance you have any um, automotive uh, like pry tools typically they're softer than the material you're prying apart uh, if the camera will focus here um, you can sort of see I, I've dinged it a little bit in some spots so that wouldn't happen if you actually use some some pry tools so this here just be cautious as well it's just like a little bit of tin tape but you don't want to rip it because it is something that you do want to have for the next drive. Alright, 
So all the sides are off. Now, as far as the front connector is concerned, oh, maybe we have to. This one off as well. This one looks to be coming off a little bit easier. There we go. So there's the connector, and that should just come right off. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little scared of it. I myself probably should have watched some how-to videos, but you know what? Where's the fun in that? Okay, so here's the drive. This is what we're going to be using to put inside the, uh, the PS4. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and actually start dismantling the console here. So again, I'm working through the camera, so bear with me um, through some of the trials that we're gonna have here. So as far as removing the black portion here, this is all you're going to need to remove, and it should just push down and pull right off. So we're gonna give that a try. Using a little bit of force, we can see that it just removes very, very easily. Uh, I had heard that actually getting it completely off is a pain, but wasn't too too bad as a side note as well guys take this time while you have it while your console is out of your entertainment center i uh, give it a good cleaning um treat these things with respect they're going to last you a lifetime just make sure you get rid of all the dust bunnies that may be inside so we've got one screw head here that we're going to need to remove before we can get the actual hard drive tray out so we're just going to go about getting that out now I'm using the world's smallest screwdriver, so it's not the easiest thing to do. But that's what I could find because it's all I looked for. Okay, so you've got this drive sled here. Comes out extremely easy, as you can see. You've actually got four screws. So two on this side and two on this side. So we're going to have to remove those to get the actual drive out of the sled. Should be very straightforward. I'm sure everybody knows how to operate a screwdriver, how to remove screws. If you don't, please do not even bother starting this process of removing everything from your console. I am absolutely terrified for you as a human being. All right, so. This is the last one here. This one's kind of hidden underneath that sled housing. Not too, too bad to get out though. And that's it. So the tray the drive literally comes right out of the tray as you can see here. So this has been the actual removal of, if we can get this focused here. There we go, the 500 gig, 5200 RPM drive. Just gonna move across here. Again, we've got our new Samsung. This is our 2000 gigabyte drive, same RPMs. And, and here we go. Just line up the screw heads and pop these suckers in. Now, Nyko is actually releasing an attachment as well called the Nyko Data Bank. And now what that will allow you to do is take any 3.5 drive, and I think it can go up to five terabytes depending on the partitions that you make on the drive, um, but it'll take that drive and it'll actually allow you to put that into the PS4. Beforehand, this was the only solution, was finding a laptop sized drive, doing exactly what I'm doing now, and upgrading the hard drive. The power bank, the data bank, sorry, allows you to use a full computer hard drive. And why that's pretty amazing is just looking at the general cost of them. These drives per gigabyte are a little bit more expensive compared to 
an actual desktop drive. And desktop drives are also easier to find and come in larger increments of storage. Now, I myself could have waited and I could have went for that attachment as well as desktop drive. Financially though, for me, there you go guys, got all this in. Financially for me, it wouldn't have worked out very optimally. And the reason why is again in Canada right now, one, the data bank is not even available. Two, um, the data bank has a retail cost of $50. Now, looking at that for $50, we're also looking at a two terabyte desktop drive being around $90. Now, 90 plus 50 is 140. I get this drive for 119 plus I can use it as an external. So, uh, more cost effective for me. I don't have a lot of digital games. I I'm sure I will go that route in the future. Um, but for now, this is this is well well within my means, well within my price range, and again, two terabytes of storage is, is quadrupling the storage that I get from the factory. So we can see this is all back together. We're just gonna go about putting the flashing back on. Now with this, you gotta kind of hook the front and the back first. Somehow, maybe we'll just try to yeah, we'll just slide it. And don't be don't be scared of it. You're not gonna break it. Watch. I'll break it. Cause that's just the type of person I am and the type of luck that I have. Perfect. So you go. There's the teardown and the, the build up, if you will, of putting in the drive. So the only thing left to do now is to put the software onto the drive and, uh, and then put the, the restore file back on. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hook it back up off camera to my, uh, my second living room TV in the man cave and we'll see what happens after that. All right, so now we're going to prepare the USB drive for the install of the PlayStation dashboard. So I'm already halfway there. You can see it's just PlayStation.com. Um, I'll put the full URL extension in the, uh, the video description below. But what we're going to do is perform a new installation of the system software. So taking a look, they break it down into steps. First thing you're gonna need would be a um, USB flash drive of at least 900 megabytes. So one gigabyte and above is certainly all you need for this. Um, so on the storage device, create a folder for saving the update. Using a computer, create a folder named PS4 and inside that, make a folder named update. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna bring this over to my second screen. And we're gonna create new folder. And in here, we're going to create new folder. This is update. And then going back one as well. This one is going to be labeled PS4. Rename PS4. That's PS money sign. Though they are expensive, that should be a four. All right, so that's done. So PS4 and update. Um, it's funny that it doesn't mention it here. I did cheat and kind of look ahead and um, capitalized is absolutely key. So as you can see here in the quotations, it does state that it's all in capitals. Um, but if you're doing this at home, please, please, please make sure that you are writing this exactly as you see it. The capitals are key. If you do not have it all capitalized, your PlayStation will not recognize it and it will not function. So we're gonna start the download. The internet speed is pretty okay. Um, we're relying on PlayStation service here as well to, to give us the software, but my connection at home is pretty decent. So we'll kind of skip forward here and wait for it to finalize. So it looks like the update is now complete. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna 
show and folder. Let's see all the stuff that I download. Please ignore all those torrents. Uh, well, take that off screen. How about that? We're going to open up our file explorer, PS4, update, and then we're going to drag the update pup right over. Now, right now, I am restricted with a USB 2.0 drive, so again, we're going to wait out the two minutes and uh, jump back here in a few moments. Alright, perfect. So it looks like that has completed. So now it's very, very safe for you just to close this down. As far as the rest of the instructions, we'll be working through that together. Um, as a side note, again, I don't know if it says here, I'm just kind of skimming through, um, but you need to ensure that the USB is plugged into the PS4 before you turn the console on. If you turn the console on and then plug in the P or the, the memory stick with the uh, update pop file, it will not detect the USB key unless you power down and power back up again. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut away. We'll, uh, we'll get it all set up. We'll do the reinstallation. And you know what, guys? We're almost done. This is absolutely fantastic. So we're going to cut away and we'll see what happens with the installation here. All right, guys, welcome back. So I've actually got it to the point now that we're going to go about reinitializing the PS4. So reinstalling the system software. I've got the USB key in the actual PlayStation itself. Now that I've arrived at this screen, it looks like my powered hub is working. I just needed to initialize the controller directly on the console first. And let's actually just hit it now. Let's go ahead and try to reinitialize. So connect the USB storage that contains the update file for reinstallation for version 2.51 or later. You can download the update file for reinstallation from PlayStation.com. So in an earlier cut, we've already done that. I already have it plugged in, so we're going to go to OK. And please wait. So that's exactly what we're going to do is we're just going to wait it out. All right, so the PS4 will be initialized. All users and all data will be deleted. Well, I mean, in all honesty, there's nothing on this drive anyway, so we're totally okay with that. Are you sure you want to continue? We're going to have to, but yes, I'm absolutely sure. Initializing, do not turn off the PS4. Preparing to update system software. All right, now same as before, guys. This is a quick reboot, so that's why you lost video for a moment. So I'm just going to start recapturing now. And as we can see here, we're now at the system software update window. So a lot nicer looking uh, as far as an interface is concerned compared to the safe mode. Uh, installing update file. Do not turn off the PS4 during installation. After the installation has completed, the PS4 will automatically restart. So we're probably going to lose that video again. I'll be sure to capture it as soon as I possibly can. I learned from my previous mistake. And uh, we'll speed through this and we'll see what happens afterwards. <laughs> So we're on the home stretch. So right now the console is just turned back on. This is going to look very familiar to those of you who um, have already set up your PS4 for the first time and maybe you're just doing an update. You've gone through this um, the very first time you turn the console on. So step one, obviously you turn it on. Step two, plug in a, a controller and press the PlayStation button. So that's what we're doing. 
In my case, we're going to pick English United States because in Canada we're typically multilingual and I don't want French. So English United States, next. Checking network environment. I am going wired. As you can see, there's my couch. I am not on it because I'm on my workstation. And we are not Eastern time. We are Atlantic time here on the East Coast. May 11th, happy birthday to me. And yeah, we're 10.30 a.m. Um, yep, all that looks okay. Yep, and yep. Yep. Yep, perfect. I accept, sign my life away. Perfect. Setup of your PS4 is complete. Enjoy an exciting world of entertainment. So I'm not going to worry too, too much about this because I will be reinstalling my backup file on my get a rigged uh, hard drive array that I have set up. So for now, user one is more than fine. And look at this, guys. Right now, what you are seeing here would be the interface of a brand new PS4. Now, the moment of truth is actually going into the settings and taking a look at the storage management. So if I can get a little tiny virtual drum roll here. Look at that, 1.77 terabytes available. That is an absolute gorgeous sight to see. So much more room for activities, so much more room for games. Um, I'm completely ecstatic, guys. So it looks like it was a success. Um, don't want to kill my chickens before they hatch necessarily. We still have to put the backup file back on, but we've got the hard drive in. The hard drive's recognized. We've got the software on there. Um, so technically, it's completely usable. Um, I could I could live without my save files. It's not the end of the world. I've got them clouded anyway through PlayStation Plus. Um, but let's see if we can actually go ahead and put the uh, the backup software, the backup file from the hard drive, back onto this thing. So we're gonna leave it here. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of maintenance on the console, plug in that drive. We'll see if we can't put everything back on. And again, we'll see everybody in just a minute. All right, so we're back, guys, and as you can see, I still haven't set up my profile or anything like that. I went and I grabbed my hard drive. I've got it plugged in, and we're just going to go about now restoring the backup. So basically the same thing we did before. We're going to go into the settings. We're going to go into system. In system, you're going to see the backup and restore. Um, I like this. So back up and restore, we're going to restore PS4 now. We've got the hard drive in there. As you can see, this is Quasi Dog's PS4, which would be myself, backed up yesterday of 234.7 gigabytes of absolute raw awesomeness. So the system will be restored with the backup data you selected. When you start restoring, the PS4 will be initialized and all user and all data will be deleted. After that, the PS4 will be restored using the backup data. Again, we don't necessarily care about that that much because we've just done a hard drive swap. There's absolutely nothing on that hard drive except for user one, which I could care less about. So we're gonna go ahead and restore. The PS4 will be restored after restoration starts. The PS4 will not return to the current state. Are you sure you want to continue? After you select yes, the PS4 will automatically restart, be initialized, and then be restored. If you cancel while restoring, the PS4 will still be initialized. So we're gonna pick yes on that. All right, so we're back after the restart, and now you can see here, preparing to restore. Do not turn off the PS4. After restoring has completed, the PS4 will automatically restart. So this looks like it will be a long process, given the fact that over the last 30 seconds or so, we've only reached 7%. Keep in mind, this is also preparing to restore. This isn't the actual restore itself. So we'll let this skip ahead and we'll see what happens in a few minutes here. As you can see here at the bottom, it is stating for me to press the PS4 button, which I will do just to initiate the controller. And we'll let this run through.
right, perfect. So the preparation has completed. We're gonna leave this here, guys. I'm not gonna bother recording three hours of empty restoration. At this point, I'm gonna go do other fun things like clean my front yard. Um, it's springtime now and I got to get all the dead twigs and stuff like that from the harsh winter that we had. So we're going to let this roll through. We're going to do it off camera and we'll see exactly how it pans out once everything turns back on. Other than that, the only thing I'm looking to do maybe to cap off this video would be um, how to take the PS4 hard drive that was once in the console, pop it into the external enclosure and then utilize that drive as an external backup. So we'll leave this here for now, guys, and uh, we'll see what happens in a bit. All right, guys, welcome back. So here we are after the full restore. We're just gonna go ahead and hit that PlayStation button. As you can see, the three user accounts that were set up before, being myself, my girlfriend, and her brother, our babysitter as well, um, have all been restored. And drum roll again, look at this. We've got the Lego Batman. Everything's set up as per before. I think for security precaution, we have to sign in once more to the PlayStation Network. That's absolutely understandable. So again, let's take a look at the hard drive space, system storage, and perfect. So now our applications, because I had to reduce it before due to the small hard drive size I had for a backup, we can now see that the 228 gigs are still all set back. We've got our application save data, which is always save games, the themes, and look at that. Instead of having 107 gigs free, we now have 1.53 terabytes. Let me tell you guys, that's a beautiful thing. I love seeing that. Um, I hope and I don't hope that gets filled up. In all honesty, it's nice to have the room. I'm gonna throw all the PlayStation Plus games on there that I've got since I've bought this console day one. I've always been a huge fan. Um, we may exclude the turds that I've either tried and hated or just really have no no care or use for because Witcher's coming out again. The uh, House of Wolves is coming out for Destiny on the 19th, which is just an eight short days away. So we wanna make sure we don't overload for all that future content that's coming down the pipe. Um, so guys, I'm gonna just very quickly do a, a video as well on throwing the old hard drive back into that Seagate external case for you just in case it's something that you guys have done as well. Um, if you didn't buy an external and you went ahead and bought an internal, I mean, this video is done for you guys. This should have showed you from start to finish exactly how to back up, sync your trophies, take that drive out, put your drive in, put the firmware on it, and put your restore file back on the console. Um, let's look at the trophies here. Oh, I got to sign in, but that's all right, guys. So we're going to cut this off here. Um, thank you so much for following me through this journey. Um, hopefully I get your attention long enough to have you sub to the channel. Throw a like down on the video as well. I would greatly appreciate it. This is a new channel and a new endeavor for me. I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at it as time progresses, a little bit more comfortable as well. So your feedback is absolutely 100% appreciated. Um, also, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again one more time. As you guys can see, if I go into my settings, I have been recording this the entire time with my Roxio HD uh, Pro or whatever you want to call it, capture card, and going into system settings, I do have enable HDCP turned on. Uh, this is something that's mandatory to, mandatory to turn off for any capture card um, with no exclusion to the Roxio as well. I have found a way around that. If you guys are at all interested, please let me know. Please give me a sub and uh, that will definitely motiv uh, motivate me to make more videos like this aside from just gameplay. Maybe give you guys another tutorial on how to do that because I absolutely love it. Uh, I use this console quite frequently for things like Netflix and that's disabled if you have enable HDCP turned off and nobody likes jumping back and forth between capping, turning it off, turning it on, watch some videos and what have you. So again, thank you so much guys and we'll see you in the next video. Stick around for the next few moments here if you guys are curious about how to set up that uh, old 500 gig drive in the Seagate enclosure. All right guys, so last but not least, um, actually technically yes, I don't know why they have that saying because this is absolutely least. Um, we're going to put everything back together in that Seagate enclosure. So what was a two terabyte drive came out, went into the PS4. Um, what we're going to place back into the enclosure would be the old 500 because why waste it? If we've got an enclosure, we might as well put it all together, 
use it as sort of a, a backup. And I like this versus a full size because it does not require power. So here you have your external SATA to USB. So that's just gonna go right on the end of the SATA port here. Line it up, plug it in, bang, bang, boom, you're done. Now you've got this shielding. This is what we tried not to rip before. And honestly, I'm not even gonna pretend that I know what this is for, but I can only assume it's just magnetic shielding. It doesn't have to be pretty, guys. I'm just gonna throw that around, around the side of the drive, side of the drive, and here. So, <laughs> it looks like shit, but what's important is the connector. And all that is on there. You've got your enclosure. Make sure that you line up everything here. Again, you can see where I kind of notched and dinged it a little bit. Just watch yourself. This goes label side up. Feed the connector through. Okay, that's there. And what I'm gonna do as well is, I might as well do a little test fit. So we have the factory cable that came with it. And, yep, perfect, everything fits. Take the back door. I don't specifically know which way this goes, and also I don't think it matters. So we'll do Seagate logo at the bottom because that's what makes sense to me. But there's no LED lights or any holes that line up that specify we need a specific orientation. So, snap the enclosure shut. There you go. So we now have the enclosure. And you can go ahead and use that as an external drive. So again, thanks so much guys. Like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.